I hope you like a lot of different kinds of metal because this week I got a bunch of diverse and absolutely killer picks for you. Welcome metalheads, I'm the host of Heavy Metal Philosophy and writer for Metal Digest, John Barbas. Make sure you stick around to the end of the episode for this week's Album Art of the Week. And it was a pretty busy week for me this week because I had five different albums that I got sneak previews for and all of my reviews for those are published in Metal Digest, links in the description. Several of them made this week's show because they were that good. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's big album releases before we do the top five. And speaking of sneak peeks, I got a sneak peek to this new album from Chamber called A Love To Kill For. This is some noisy metalcore. And before you jump to conclusions because I called it metalcore, don't. Because you're not going to hear music like this very often. It's extremely noisy, insane rhythms, very short songs, almost like grindcore. It's chaotic, but it's controlled chaos. You just absolutely have to hear it. It will beat you down from beginning to end. There's nothing pretty here, but it's so well done. Check it out. Next up, we got a new album from the Cavalera Conspiracy called Morbid Visions. That groovy thrash that you know and love from the Cavalera Brothers. In my mind, Max Cavalera can do absolutely no wrong, and I'm not trying to hear any arguments to the contrary. If the Cavalera Brothers put out music, I'm all over it. You should be too. And lastly, before we do the top five, there's a new record from Evile called The Unknown. This is another big album that I got sneak preview of listened to it all week and i loved it if you are a fan of that early 90s sound of metal like i am this will scratch that itch that doesn't often get scratched these days you'll absolutely love it if you like 90s era metallica megadeth machine head corrosion of conformity plus you know they're doing their own thing here fantastic record if you should absolutely check out now let's do the top five Coming in at number five, we've got Radiant Knife with Pressure. And this is progressive sludge metal from Louisiana, which is fitting because it sounds downright swampy. This reminds me of the kind of prog that early Mastodon would do, except for instead of quirky sounding, it's sludgy sounding. And there's lots of inventive rhythms on here. Definitely a unique record that I really liked a lot, and you will too if you check it out. Coming in at number four, we've got End Rain with The Way of All Flesh is Decay. Super metal album title. This is crossover thrash from Baltimore. And when I normally say crossover thrash, you think about this mix of like hardcore and thrash, but it's very punk rock sounding. This leans more towards the thrash side, very old school thrash sounding, but you can definitely hear the hardcore in there, the subtle death metal grooves. And you know me, that's really going to be right up my alley. That's why it's on this week's list. Check it out. Coming in at number three, we've got Among Ruins, Land of the Black Sun. This is melodic death metal from Greece, and I love this one because it's very epic sounding while maintaining brutality. Melodic death metal is kind of hit or miss with me because sometimes it gets a little bit too pretty for my taste, a little bit too melodic and not enough death. This doesn't suffer from that. Lots of brutal death metal vocals, but the music itself is just soaring adventure. I am thrilled by this one. You will be too if you check it out. Coming in at number two is Voyager with Fearless and Love, and this is Prague from Australia. This is another one that I got a sneak preview of. It's a good thing too because this one's real weird. I had to listen to this one a bunch of times. But you know I love it weird. This is the weird album of the week. This kind of sounds to me like the sort of proggy instrumental stuff that I'm normally guitar nerding out over like Pliny, Animals as Leaders, that sort of thing. But this band has a singer. 
So they sort of toned down the quirkiness of the prog ever so slightly to give the singer room to do what he does. And this singer is just, he's a pop star. It's catchy melodies all over the place, all over this crazy music that goes the full range from 80s synth goth to video game music to gent metal. And then there's a guitar solo every now and again, and the guy plays a guitar. It's just all my weird nerd stuff is going crazy at once. Plus I get the head bang. I absolutely love it. Check it out. And hey, before we do number one, if you love metal the way that I love metal, then you're in the right place and you should join the heavy metal philosophy community. If you like any of these bands, hit the like button because it helps spread the message about them. And that's what we love to do here. But now let's do number one. Coming in at number one, the name of the band is The Devil's Trade, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this album title. How many episodes have you longtime subscribers watched where I make this piss poor attempt to pronounce these weird album titles and band names, and most of the time I butcher them? This one, I'm not even going to try. I don't even know how these accents go. The text is on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. And the link to their every band's band camp will be in the description so you can find the music. I'm very sorry. My tongue just doesn't do that. But it doesn't matter. The music is what we're talking about here. And this music is magical. Now, for some of you, this may not be what you would put number one out of all these other bands because it's not all that heavy. There's like two songs on here that are pretty heavy. It's not death metal. It's dark folk doom. And yeah, if you're like me, you've probably never heard that genre before. I was like, I've never heard that genre before. And then I heard the record and I was like, now I know why they called it that. This record is just, it gives me feelings, y'all. Real heartbroken, gut-wrenching feelings. It starts with like this ancestral ritual or something. It's in another language, I don't understand it. And then the next song is this beautiful but somber song. And, and it's in English, you can't understand that. The, the lyrics are powerful, the vocals are just, they grab you and you go, this guy feels what he's talking about. This, I needed some ice cream and some puppy snuggles after that. And because it made me feel so strongly, I just, I had to pick it number one. It's not very often that a record moves me like this. And then plus, as a musician, I listen to this and go, wow, that is incredible what y'all achieved here. That's why it's number one. Maybe you like one of the heavier numbers before a little bit more than you like this one. And I get that, but you should at least listen to this one for the art. That's why it's number one for the art. And speaking of art, now let's talk about this week's album art of the week. This week's album art of the week comes from Crown Magnetar and it's called Everything Bleeds. Long time viewers of this show will know that I tend to stay away from what I consider typical death metal album covers. And this one borders on that. It, it's got that death metal album cover look and hey, look, I love a good skull or a monster as much as the next guy, but I try to pick album art that stands out. And this one just stood out to me, despite the fact that it's borderline, you know, death metal album art that we're used to. Because, is that Jesus? Is it's crucified to this throne? Maybe it's not Jesus. Maybe it's a statement about leadership because you've got this person crucified, not to a cross, but a throne, look closely, there's nails driven through this person into the throne. And of course, crown of thorns. So is this indicative of people in charge? Is this sort of like a sword of Damocles sort of statement? Or, you know, is this just a cool way to make a death metal album cover? I don't know, but it's an oil painting. It's very well done. The color scheme is arresting. The subject is fascinating. It makes me want to listen to this deathcore from Colorado, which I absolutely did and loved it. I mean, what more do you need to say than that? This is super metal, and that's why it's the album art of the week. And speaking of metal, 
That's all we do here is talk about metal. So if you want to catch another great episode of Heavy Metal Philosophy, just click right here. But most importantly, read philosophy, listen to metal. I love you.